Happy Saturday, people. <laughs> uh, you know what, we've had all this really nice weather, and I was going to be taking the, the, the kids out to a waterfall thing up at Bell's Quarry. But uh, it's not looking too good. Sod's law, eh? Anyway, I'm going to try and do as much as I can in this before I have to head, have to head off, and then I'll maybe finish it off later. Right now, I want to talk about the graded unit. Let's see. Right, basically it's kind of like a revision, the first few questions are like a revision of all that you've done, uh, materials, statics, dynamics, thermal fluids and uh, project management. See I've not done project management as, as a subject for a long time, uh, so I don't know all the ins and outs of it as such. But looking at the the paper and previous papers, it's very straightforward. So I'm going to have to leave you to try and just revise the stuff you've done before. And bear in mind, the questions in the first part of the paper are a revision of what you've done before. The questions in part B are slightly harder. They're sort of specific statics question or a specific uh, dynamics question or a specific thermal fluids question. You have to pick to answer out of five questions in section B. So you have to answer all the questions in section A and just three out of five. I'm looking at it. I mean it's not much harder than the stuff we've been doing. I mean that, see that beam question we did in uh, statics? That was on a par, maybe a bit harder actually. So I would revise all your static stuff, revise your dynamics and what I'm going to do here, I'm going to have a look at thermal fluids here right, maybe remind you remind you about a, a few uh, bits and bobs and maybe get a different idea about it. Right, so I'll go through a bit of thermals, I'll do a few examples and then I'm going to send you like specific examples of harder questions and if you can answer them you'll be well prepared to answer anything that we, that we can throw at you. I'm just trying to think anything else I need to add there. Ah, your materials. See your materials it's very it's very simple just read up all your stuff your ductility if you had a certain metal what would it be good for you could make a tin of beans out of it you know it's like what or or copper that it's good for conducting electricity and it's mould that you can bend the wire it's all that kind of stuff I could maybe do a wee, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to have to do a wee manufacturing one for the HNDs a quick one this week, I found out last week so, but I'm going to do materials and all that and that so I could maybe link you into that one I'll probably have that done in a couple of days hopefully and so that'll be alright but you, you know it all anyway it's very simple stuff. The only ones we have to really concentrate on is what three you're going to pick out of the section B. As I say, dynamics, statics, thermal fluids, and there's like a pneumatic one. There's a couple of things in statics we need to go over actually. Just a couple of little things. Just to make, make it clear. Let's see, and a pneumatics question, and, uh, and there's another question that's like a mix, it might have a bit of, it's actually got a bit of statics in it, it's got dynamics in it, and that's what I was, was maybe going to go over with you, there's a thing about when you compress uh, a solid that's maybe, say you've got a, like a, a tube like that, and then you're pushing into maybe a square block and you've got another wee tube smaller so the force is acting more so on this because it's got a smaller area so in other words that'll if it was pushing it together that would compress a certain amount but the force is distributed over a bigger area but I'll, I'll get to that right I'll get to that right 
Now there was one other thing I wanted to talk about is the obviously after the summer the the college is hopefully going to be open and if it doesn't open chances are around about Christmas time maybe after Christmas at the very worst I think I think we will be open there was talk of you even coming in to sit your graded unit at the end of term maybe in small groups but we're still not sure what's going to happen either way you'll be doing it you'll be getting a a test century whatever happens now these are all in HNC I would if you want to carry on with your studying like I've uh, been to university I went from first year I went from HNC to my straight in the second year and from all my experience of all that and I would say that if you stick to West Lothian College and do your HND here what I will do well we'll see what we've got a really good team now right and see Obviously, you know this was my f first year last year, right? And I was a bit shaky <laughs> at times. I I really was learning my trade, but I really have got to grips with it now. And even saying that I started last year, see when I done uh, the sort of main mechanical module, which you'll do in the HND plant systems, it's over two terms. It's quite, it's quite not that difficult, really. Well, if you if you get into it, but the thing is. After you leave here, I, I'm, that's me finished with you. So if I, if you come do your HND, we're finished, right? So that's what I said to them last year. And I said, well, I'm not caring what you're going to learn in third year. What I'm wanting to do is equip you with the tools to make you go into work and instantly be able to start making a, making a difference to where you work. In other words, what I'll be able to teach you and what I taught the last HNDs as I taught them far more than they ever got taught before in their plant systems previously. I'm not uh, saying anything bad about any predecessors or whoever was there, nothing like that at all. It's just my take and it's different. And what I did is anybody who done well in plant systems just there could go to an employer and they would know far, far more than even a third year student would probably know. I may be a bit busy, maybe a bit ambitious there. But on what I mean by that is if they went to say a, a pumped hydro system and they were building a new one and you had to come up with some sort of idea of how to plan it and work it and do it, uh, I've equipped them to be able to come up with a rough plan that won't be too, they won't know all the ins and outs of it, but they could come up with a plan from A to B to C to Z and it will work and it will be very close the actual real life situation will be very close to what they would they would say how to do it and that's what I'm saying to you it's I would say start applying for your HND now and I will teach you to the best of my ability and I'm getting much better and better at this all the time and everybody else in the team's great Tomac and all the other crew there and what the worst thing possible thing that could happen is that we start after Christmas, not start but go back to college after Christmas. But in the meantime, you'll get loads of videos from me. <laughs> so <laughs> how can you go wrong? So I so basically you should start applying for H N D and uh, right anyway, I've been blaring on too long already. Sorry about that. I'm gonna try and make my videos shorter, I mean making it longer by saying this. <laughs> but I'll get to this now, okay? Cheers. I'm going to look at flowing a pipe and uh, Bernoulli's equation. And if, whenever you used to mention Bernoulli's before you, you learnt about it, people used to quake in fear. Oh no, the Bernoulli's. But it's actually quite simple, really. I'm going to show you why, hopefully. Right, basically, what Bernoulli was saying, if you have a flow of water or any kind of fluid down here 
you'll get a flow coming out of this end and whatever goes into there what amount of flow goes into there must come out of this side it's the same as a, an electrical circuit actually if you the amount of current that goes into one part of a wire must come out the other part even see this pipe split into two say or whatever the sum of the flows here would still equal the flow there right now I'm going to see the Bernoulli's equation here we've got the pressure over density gravity see and when you see for just a hose like this see, see that was a hose right the pressure here is a manifestation of atmospheric pressure because this would be seen as like an open loop system as such I don't want to complicate things or anything but in other words say, say this was more like a a thing where it had a reservoir and it was pushing water maybe towards a pump or something like that and then you had you were pumping up to maybe a, a reservoir up here or something like that there is there is your atmospheric pressure but you have to include this into whatever the pressure of the system is so down here you would have your atmospheric pressure plus you would have this potential energy or pressure there as well adding to this but we'll get to that we'll get to that where's my rubber right but that system I've just rubbed out there you have your atmospheric pressure plus you have the pressure of your head included there and what is it you just call it generally H or a head when you're dealing with pumps and things now also you've got the the velocity of the fluid moving along there and that's given as that so what you've got there is you've got the pressure any head pressure plus you've got your atmospheric pressure plus you have the speed or the velocity sorry right and this is going to equal so this is kind of like imagine this is at one side and the other side here you've got whoops oh for God's sake. you've got your pressure divided by density here right plus whatever head is here plus the speed at this point okay and again, you, if you're an engineer, you tell you just call this V, that's not H. Right, so let's have a look at this. See, this was just on a horizontal plane. Right. And you see yourself, well, what's. So if this was atmospheric pressure and they're at the same level, they're going to equal each other. So you can kind of cancel that out right and then the head here the height of this tube is the same height as that part of the tube so these heads are going to equal each other you can cast them out so what you're left with is c1 over 2g equals c2 over 2g right now you think to say well in this situation these uh, these would be the same velocity because there's no change in the tube, right? What are we saying? I'll show you something. Right. So say this uh, hose here has got a wee nozzle at the end of it. And this nozzle nozzle has a distance there. Yeah. Right. And we're seeing that this is all kind of horizontal so there's no it's lying in the one plane so again the heads here are going to be the same like what I had up there and atmospheric pressure however now one thing is 
what we what we were left with earlier was c1 over 2g equals c2 over 2g right now you could you can just cancel these out and you would say well c1 equals c2 but that we know that's not right the reason that's not right is because the flow of water is equal to the velocity times the area right so if the area changes that means there's going to be a change in the velocity because the flow is always going to be the same so you have to replace these by uh, uh, velocity equals q over a so what we're left with here then is q over a1 equals q over a2 because they're both the same and therefore what we've just got here then in fact the q equals va and if they see the flow is equal on either side that means the velocity or sorry c one times a one is going to equal q and here what we can see that and here q is going to equal uh, c2 a2 so when we go back to this equation where the flow q1 is going to equal q2 that must mean then that c1 a1 equals c2 a2 so therefore the difference in velocities is a manifestation of the area that it can go through and it's one thing about these is these are all these are all measures in meters actually it's really handy uh, that's what I mean is by the the units of each equation there is actually a meter right so I'm going to show you that just now right look at this first well that's pressure divided by density times gravity you see that so if we just look at the units here density uh, sorry pressure is force over area right which is going to be force and um, we'll look at meters so the area is going to be meters squared then it's going to be divided by the density which is its mass divided by its volume it's going to be meters cubed so that's mass then multiply that by the force of gravity F equals MA so A is going to equal F over M force over mass so what we're going to be left with is force over mass here right. and you can see they'll cancel out and what you're left with is force over meters squared divided by force over meters cubed and if you cross multiply they cancel that cancels and that cancels through your life of meters so that's why this value here can be measured in meters it's really really handy right now I'll show you this other one c squared over 2g right uh, what's a velocity? a velocity is a metre divided by a second and that's squared and what's your acceleration? that's a metre per second squared you see that? so what you're going to get there is metres squared over second squared because you square both these terms divided by metres over second squared again cross multiply And 
what you're left with is meters. Because that'll cancel and that'll cancel. So I'm just trying to illustrate here why that is measured in meters. And the next one here is your head, right? Your Z, right? Your head. Like how is that measured in meters? Or why is that measured in meters anyway? So looking at this, what you got is this is a manifestation of you have water up here say pushing down a tube and you have kinetic energy here and you have potential uh, energy here okay now if you were to lift an amount of water up this height or z head the energy you'd need would be the mass times g times the head and that's going to equal if it's all turned into kinetic energy it's going to be equal to half m v or sorry c squared right and what we're looking for is the head so if we put that there the head is going to equal which is going to equal uh, a half m c squared divided by m G. So they're going to cancel. And you're going to be left with C squared over 2G. Which is us back to this one. Which obviously equals meters. So that's why. Oops, can you see that? That's why you can use this when you're working out these four equations. Or, or the, the Bernoulli's equation, basically, As, and it's it's f m massively simplified by the fact that these are all measured in meters. It makes it very easy to look at. Now, I was talking about head there, with this one, right? Now, maybe I'll do a wee example here. Right, see what a, a flow rate of. I don't know, uh, 20 meters cubed per second and we had a, a pipe diameter of, I don't know, 2 meters, say 3 meters and the pipe's like a kind of, so it starts at 3 meters here Oops. Uh, it goes to like five meters here or something like that. So we want to want to work out the the velocities here. The Q equals sorry C one A one, which is going to be this area here. And uh, at this part, Q is going to equal C two plus A two. Now we can kind of work out the ratio. So C1 A1 equals C2 A2. So C1 is going to equal A2 over A1 times C2. Work out the area. See area 1. We, we've got the diameter. So we'll just use that. D squared pi D squared over 4 which is going to equal 7.065 and this A2 this area here is going to be 5 pi squared over 4 which is 12.3 3 say Okay, so the difference in uh, velocities between these two then is C1 is going to be the ratio of A2 What was A2 this one? 12.33 divided by 7.065 times C2 which equals 1.745 So that's the ratio 
So in other words, C1 is going to be 1.745 times faster than C2. Oops, can you see that there? So what's happening here is, is like in a nozzle and a in a hose, like we've got there. If you've got a certain amount of flow coming in this way, and it's got a wider area, there's going to be a bigger pressure. See this part, this part here of your equation. See, see the heads are the same, right? This part here, in this situation, these are all equal. But in this situation, these are both different and these are both different. Because the area that this is moving into is changing and the volume. So there's more, there's a different uh, rate coming out here. So this is coming out at a different speed. So that's why in a nozzle this will shoot out much faster. Or if you've got a wee a syringe, when you squeeze the syringe, it shoots out really far, it goes very fast. That's because, and it's kind of counterintuitive because you'd think when it shoots out there would be more pressure there. But it actually turns out there's less pressure but more speed. Because this this must this must have a certain value because there's a certain flow going through here. Right? So if you increase the pressure, if you decrease the volume, you have to increase the pressure and what we're saying here, see this was lying flat so we're not taking into account the heads just here at this moment in time now what's happening here so the faster this goes the less pressure there is the slower this goes the bigger the pressure I hope that makes sense it is kind of counterintuitive slightly but trust me that's what happens uh, so what we've done here is we've kind of worked out that the areas here dictate the speeds of it. Another thing I did neglect to put in Bernoulli's there is you're going to get losses. And that's a big thing. You go to plant systems, we have to work out all the losses and stuff. You know, pipes and things. And compressors. Remember, compressor gas is a fluid. Those compressors work on a very similar uh, rules. So, so where are we? We are. We've, so we've we've worked out the the relationship between the ratio of the area at each end of the pipe, and what we won't be doing in this is working out the losses. But the losses would occur generally due to friction uh, in this zone here. But we'll just neglect that just now. Now, so the next thing with this is... Now, in this situation here, say this is at an angle going up the way. Let's see, that was at, I don't know, 25 degrees or something like that. And we have a length here. A length that is. Right, so we're going to have a wee look at how Bernoulli's equation is going to be affected by this. So you've got P1 plus C1 plus C1 is going to equal P2 over C gravity plus C2 over 2G plus C2. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. See this pressure here, see if this is like a, what they call a closed loop system and say this was coming from the water mains to a hose that was be some sort of a 30 metre nozzle at the end of it So this system would have a pressure that should be equal to whatever pressure was applied at this point The atmospheric pressure is, both, is equal on both sides So they kind of cancel each other out so we're left with what pressure's here, what pressure we're going to find will be there when the water's coming out here. And uh, right. 
Right, so before the heads were uh, equal because it was lying on uh, this flat, the pipe was lying flat, but now it's elevated at this angle here. So from this point to this point, there is going to be a change in the height, which means that gravity is going to affect us. So what we want to do is just find out this distance here because we know that these are all measured in meters, meters, meters equals meters, meters, meters so we know this one here, this Z2 is just going to be a measured in meters and we can see that we can actually work this out then so say that's 30 meters long we want to find out this height we've got the angle there, 25 degrees which, and we're looking for the opposite and we have the hypotenuse so that's going to be the sine then you see that because that's the opposite and this is a hypotenuse so this height here is Z2 is going to equal 30 sine 25 which equals 12 0.68 meters. Right, we will have to take losses into account. <laughs> Oops, and we'll call that Z for friction, F for friction. Right, so this, apart from the wee bit of friction, this is essentially the same as when it's flat, right? Apart from, there's a difference in the heads there. So you could rewrite this as plus Z2 minus Z1 and plus the frictional losses. Oops, hope you can see that there. So I've just basically moved that to the other side and I'm subtracting it from that and that will give us the difference which in this case if we were saying that was like zero it is going to be 12.68 and when you work out your frictional losses what they would do is they wouldn't want you to go through the whole rigmarole but you might get a per unit kind of thing it will say uh, frictional losses would have an equivalent loss of say 4 meters per 100 meters so if this is 30 meters you would get this 4 meters of loss would be worked out like that sorry, not the way around because it would be 38 divided by 100 metres so it's roughly about, what's that? that's 30% mm -hmm. of course it is so 30% of 4 is going to be, is that 1.2? yeah, that's going to be 1.2 so metres of losses Right. Now, what I'm, to, I'm just going to run through a whole example of this, okay? Just to try and, try and clarify a few things. Are sometimes maybe I'm maybe not as clear as I could be when I'm doing this. But for instance, see here, see how this has gone up. Was it twelve point six eight meters? And this is going to have to push this up that way so it's going to be harder for that to push that up and also the friction is going to actually make it it's going to be harder to push this up so the equivalent energy expended is going to be the head there or the Z2 minus Z1 plus you're going to add the losses to it in terms of a height 
as in how this because these are all measured in heights or meters sorry you're going to add this to the way it's going to make it harder like you wouldn't take that away from that head because that would be making it easier and the friction then is makes it harder for you to do something hey uh, i hope that's making sense i hope that's making sense what i'm going to quickly do is go through a, an example and hopefully that will clarify and consolidate everything now this is an example here I have an inlet and an outlet 7 bar, remember what a bar is? 1 bar is atmospheric pressure so 1 bar equals 101000 scales so this 7 bar would be 7 times 10 to the 5 pascals, we'll forget about that we one there Right, and also up here we've got 2.5 bar It's an angle of 40 degrees, I know it's moving all drawn very well We've got this Z here And Z1 We'll just be kind of seeing that at zero I suppose Right so we know the same flow is going to be going in there and coming out here flow is equal to C1 A1 is equal to C2 A2 C1 equals A2 over A1 times C2 so what's the areas here then? you've got a diameter 0.1 metres but this was 100 mil so 0.1 metres so area 1 is going to equal 0.1 squared is pi over 4 and A2 is going to equal 0.05 squared pi over 4 Right, that, you can see that there So I've just worked out the, the areas there and that will work out at which is equal to that area divided by that area that zero equals 0 0.25 times C2 so in other words C1 is 4 times slower than C2 you can actually, if you are you could combine these a little bit I suppose, you could say C1 O1 squared pi over 4 equals C2 0 0.05 squared pi over 4 and they'll cancel on either side so again it's just going to be C1 over C1 squared again you'll get the exact same answer You see that? So you could, I don't know if you actually see what I just did there, but you could put the areas in there and they'll cancel out. And see, so you did move that over to there, that actually works out at C1 and that'll be 4 equals C2, which is exactly the same as that. So let's quickly work out what this Z2 is going to be. Or this, this, uh, difference in head here and that is going to be it was 120 meters long this is going to be the sign opposite over the hypotenuse so this here is going to equal 120 times the sign of 40 which equals 77.13 meters right so so far we've got c2 equals 4 c1 or c1 equals 0.25 c2 we've got this here the 77.13 meters head that we have to kind of push against and we're going to work at the losses here it was what did uh, we see there 
That was three meters per 100 meters we're going to lose. So it's the head for friction, was, the ratio of it was three meters in every 100 meters. And we have 120 meters long, that's its length. So you multiply its length by its kind of per unit. So if that was three meters for every hundred, and if you think about it, that's basically just three percent, and three percent of that is three point six meters head loss. Right, so let's get back to Barulis then. Z one, which is here. We're going to have to say that's zero plus pressure one over density that way plus uh, C one over two G. Right now, this is going to equal Z two. This is a seventy-seven point one three plus. C2 over 2G plus P2 over density to gravity. And you have to add your losses or subtract your losses. So the only, the only unknowns we've got there is the, are these two. Right, so let's see if we can try and figure these out. So we want to find the speed right it will kind of make it easier for the calculations if you look at c2 and c1 where well, that's going to be going faster that's slower so if we subtract that from that it's going to kind of make the calculations a little bit easier so if we say c1 over 2g minus c2 Oops, what am I doing here? Ah, it's... Sorry, I forgot to put the C squared there. <laughs> Alright, so we want to take the C2. We want to take away C1 from C2. And that should leave us with a, a, like a positive number. Because that's going to be bigger. So, so if we've got C2 on the right hand side, if we want to subtract that, we just move over to this side. Right? And that's still going to leave us, imagine this is on this side. Well, in fact, we're actually just wanting these two values on their own. So if you think, right, so this is C2, and I'm moving that to this side. So everything here will have to get moved to this side, and that will become that side. I hope you didn't fall. Right, so... If this is this side, I'm subtracting that from this side. So this stuff here will still be positive. So it'll be Z1. And if I move that to there, it's going to be minus Z2. Plus, and this will stay the same, P1 over density gravity. And it's going to be minus P2 over density and gravity. And if that gets, let's see. Well, uh, yeah, you are like adding, although they're coming off, but it's the way that the equations kind of set up, these are, is going to have to get moved to there. So that's going to become a negative at this point, this frictional loss. I hope you can see that. So then, kind of simplify this a little bit. You can say C2 minus C1 squared over 2G is going to be equal to these heads, which are going to be 0, we're saying that 0, minus 77.13 plus the pressures here. And what was the pressure at 1 again? That was 7 times 10 to the 5 pascals over density and gravity but we can kind of 
Put this into one, please not appear minus. And uh, what was the pressure there again? 2.5 bar. 2.5 times 10 to the 5. All over the density of water times the force of gravity. Minus this 3.6 loss. Can you see that? Sorry about that. So I'm just putting the common denominator there, common de denominator, denominator there, and we're going to subtract that in a second. I've put the pressure there, 7 bar, or 7 times 10 to the 5 pascals, minus 2.5 bar, or 2.5 times 10 to the 5 bar eh, pascals, dividing it by density and gravity, and subtracting this head loss from it. Okay. So that just works out an algebraic number, which is going to be, hello there, right, now, what I've done there, but I've, I've just actually highlighted something, I just randomly picked these numbers, there, when I've done that, now what's happened here, is you've got your faster velocity, uh, having the slower velocity, subtracted from it so you should get a positive number here but what's happened is this head here is too high right and this pressure here at the bottom of 7.52 and the pressure at the top there the pressure difference here is not enough to overcome this height and that's why I've got a negative number there I wasn't I was wondering where I was actually going to show you this and just, just redo the whole thing but we can easily fix this. What we're going to say, well, we'll change this to 12 bar then, right? So this part here is going to be 12 uh, times 10 to the 5 pascals. And we haven't actually used the pressures in any of the other calculations here. So it's not going to make any difference. Now, so let's redo this then. So again, we've got the same head. A much increased pressure and the same losses. Let's see what that works out. At. That's better. That works out at minus 77.13 plus 96.84 minus 3.6. That's just going to leave a, a positive net head oops, let's calculate it of 16.11. Years. So, moving on for this, C2 minus C1 squared squared is equal to this 2G. We'll move that up to there, so it'll be 16.9 times 19.62. Works out at 316.08. Now this bit here, C1, we, we worked out before that C1 is equal to, uh, C2 is equal to 4 times C1. From there, C2 is equal to 4C1, so just substitute that into there, that will get 4C1 squared equals uh, minus C1 squared equals that. So that's going to be 16 C1 minus C1 which equals 15 C1 and that's going to equal that number there. So if we divide that by 15 and divide that by 15 we're going to get C1 equals I mind these are still squared mind you just still squared and that's going to equal 21.07 now we just need to find the square root of that so c1 is going to be the square root of 21.07 which is going to equal equals 4.6 meters per second I hope that's making sense so if c1 is 4.6 c2 
And there's going to be four times that. So it's at 16, 17, 18.4 is it? 18.4 meters per second. If you wanted to find, say, let's find then the, the inlet head, the head at the first part of it. Equals Z1 plus C1 squared over 2G plus P1 over density of gravity. Let's plug all these in. So we're just plugging these in again. Head 1, uh, the speed, velocity, 2G, 12 times 10 to the 5. Remember, I changed that to 12 bar. And we'll see what that works out. Sorry, it should be a squared there. Right, so if you add all that up, it comes out 123.4 meters, and that's a combination of of all the the the, the force of the fluid coming to the inlet part of it before it it goes down the cone. Well, that makes sense. Now we want to find uh, the f the actual mass flow rate. Now the mass flow rate we dot there is rate of change of mass and it's going to equal it's going to be the area it's going through times the velocity and obviously that the flow rate equals the velocity times the area and in every second see every second see that was mass that's mass per second. So if you think about an area with a velocity of fluid going through it, this becomes a volume every second. So you could say the velocity times the area per second is the volume per second. So that's going to be, and then you have to multiply, so if that's a volume of water, you have to multiply it by its density to give you its actual mass. So what's happening is here we're multiplying the density times the area times the speed and that is going to give us our amount of kilograms that are going to pass through that point in the pipe in any given second. So what's the density of water is a thousand times area one which was pi 0 0.1 squared uh, divided by 4 remember the, the diameter was that, we worked out that before, I can't quite remember what it was times 4.6 which is what you call I hope you can see that there, I've done that down a little bit and that works out at 36.13 kilograms per second and uh, you can kind of check this, I suppose, for the other side. You could say the mass flow rate should be the same uh, as the density times A2 times C2. We'll just put that to the test. So that's going to be a thousand for the density, 0 0.05 diameter. That's area times 18.4, which we worked out. Yep, that works out at 36.1 kilograms per second. So that's going to be a thousand for the density, 0 0.05 diameter, that's area times 18.4 which we worked out. Hi there, I hope you're getting that, I know, I, I feel like I'm being quite long winded about all this. What I'm going to start doing is, the other examples, I'm just going to kind of rattle through them and not do too much blethering, right? And what I want you to do is if you can send me, if you've got any questions that you want me to answer for you, Send them to me and I'll answer them for you. Okay, thanks a lot. And I'm just going to leave this one here and I'll do another thermal fluids one hopefully later on tonight and I'll get that up as soon as possible. And then that one I'll just rattle through the examples. I know you know all this stuff anyway. Right, as I say, if you can get back to me with specific ones, it would be helpful as well. Okay, cheers. Thanks, bye.